Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. Today is time for another haul video and there is so much to cover we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. The first thing that I've picked up this winter has been a mini handheld drill. Now this is non-electrical and it came with 14 different drill bits. I picked this up from Tooltopia in order to help me put a hole in the top portion of a reed. Now I'm testing out the theory of if you have a hole in a reed that it can help with the response of the high notes and this has allowed me the ability to get consistent with the results, how far I am going in through the bark of the cane, if I want to go all the way through or not, and it has allowed me different drill bit sizes, so I've been able to adjust that to see how that would affect the results. If you want to know more about this, I am going to go and do a full separate video on the things that I've been figuring out, so be sure to click that subscribe button. Now, if it sounds a little bit invasive and scary to put a hole in your favorite read, I totally understand. And that is why I also went ahead and at JSU Double Read Day, picked up a new set of diamond files. Largely because the diamond triangle file can be used to go ahead and put a divot in the center between the first and the second wires to again, give you that same kind of impact without actually putting a hole in the reed. So you're creating a similar aspect. I also love these files because it comes with a rat tail file. So if you are done reaming, you can clear out the inside of the reed. Another thing that I went ahead and picked up, if you've been keeping up with my videos, is a new platform for my MD profiling machine. Now I did a full video on the settings that I use on my MD profiling machine and I mentioned that the platform ramp that came with the machine, I had a challenge of keeping the heart thick enough while being able to take down the back. It does have the numbered ramps to do a slight level of adjustment, but I wanted to have more control. So I did order a flat ramp. The next two things I'm gonna cover are so exciting and they are bassoons. So I did go ahead and purchase a bassoon that is new to me, but it is older. I found an old Puchner bassoon and it does have the orange bell cap, which I love and adore because it is an older instrument, but man, this instrument is a powerhouse. My original thought in purchasing it, because it's not like I need another bassoon, was I had a student that was specifically looking for this style of instrument, an instrument that they could grow into. And so I went ahead and picked it up, knowing that it would need a certain amount of repair. And since then, the student has said, okay, we're not going to purchase this right now because it's not a good time for our family, which I completely understand. But I have this bassoon and I am overhauling it. And what I'd like to do is make it available to you guys. And I think that it will be very applicable to you guys because it falls into that sweet spot of pricing that it's not going to be over $10,000. It's definitely going to be under that. I will be sure to showcase it and share all of the process with you because if nothing else, that will be fun to watch. At least I think it's fantastic. The other bassoon that has come into my life is an old Kohler. This one is to me what truly has hit a point in my career that I feel like I've made it. And we all have goals in our life. And I mean, being on YouTube, we all know with bassoonists, they're not a dime a dozen. So it's not like this channel is ever going to hit a million subscribers. But when you look at what success is, sometimes it's not winning the huge job. To me, it's giving back. And this is an indication of the community that is being created on my channel. And I think the most proud moment that I've ever had. I was contacted by a YouTube subby who has asked to remain anonymous that had an extra Colert bassoon and this Colert bassoon he wanted to donate and he specifically wanted to donate it to a young student that maybe wouldn't have had a chance to come in contact with the bassoon. He had some very specific regulations and the first thing I thought of was Atlanta Music Project. I am the go-between of this bassoon so he contacted me to find the outlet to donate the instrument I then got a hold of the bassoon, made sure that it is in perfect working order, and I am going to share with you guys as I take this instrument to go and be donated. So both of those bassoons will be more in detail in upcoming videos, and I hope you will join me for that. Now, as he donated those uh, materials, he also donated a series of books, which are fantastic to my studio. Um, these are all, of course, fantastic literature pieces. The, I mean, we even got some mildy etudes in there. They are a constant. Another aspect of what was donated with the bassoon was a tool pouch. Now, inside this tool pouch, what was donated, and this is where it really hits home that sometimes the universe is looking out for you, even though you don't know it and you don't know exactly what you need. In this tool pouch, we have RDG tools. 
Now, these RDG tools, from my understanding, you can't get anymore. And this is where, like I said, the universe is looking out for me because if you watched my extra long, long joint video with guest Chad Taylor, he discussed that I have a Hertzberg bassoon. Now, these RDG handles are used in the forming of Hertzberg style reeds. And from my understanding, you will maybe correct me and I hope I'm wrong on this, but from what I have heard, these mandrels you can no longer purchase. If that's the case, then I have finally going to be able to make reeds for my Hertzberg bassoon with a Hertzberg style reed. And I have the tools to do it that were sent to me in this case. Another thing that I have picked up is, of course, more teal thread. And this is in large part because raft reeds are taking off and you guys are enjoying them. And I am going through thread as well as cane very quickly. So I did pick up several bundles. This is only half of what I've picked up from Barton Kane of the Donati Oft style. Donati Oft style is, of course, what I have been making most of the raft reeds out of. But because I've been working so consistently with Barton Cane. They are sending me a bit of Madeira Cane, which they have just picked up. And that Madeira style cane, they are going to go ahead and give me the off settings for it. And I will be trying that out in upcoming videos. In order to help me avoid cracking, I also have several new elements to work on scoring cane. The first of these is a system that was sent to me by Mel Taub. It includes this mahogany pull through system and then a PVC tube that you put the cane on in order to score the cane. And of course it has the grooved edge piece inside for the scoring. And I was sent this. This retails for $180. Now, for those of you that maybe don't have $180 in order to do scoring, I did a similar system, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, where I went ahead and built the same system on a pull handle for myself. Now, I did this with just pieces from the hardware store. The one thing about these that I'm not too excited about is that it does score directly down the center. And you know that if you necessarily wanted Aronoff cane, you could order Aronoff cane already scored. Now, when you order it already scored from Barton Kane, it will score down the center. So both of these options, although available to you, I was looking for something that maybe would be slightly different in the comparison. And you guys suggested that I go ahead and order the Barry Stees method. Now the Barry Stees method is a series of blades and these blades are separated by what looks like little tiny washers. And what I had him do is add in an extra washer in the center of these so that it would not score directly down the center and I could hopefully avoid the pitfall of cane cracking and doing a triangle arch. Now, some cane when it's really hard is just going to do that and that's okay, but if I can try to avoid it, I will. I will be giving a full on review of all of these scoring options as well as the typical type of scoring that I do with a diagonal cross hatch in an upcoming video. In the uh, box from Mel Taub with the scoring machine that is mahogany, he did also include a drying rack for reeds. Now, if you were watching me on Snapchat and I did the unboxing of this, I was a little bit shocked because I didn't read the note right off that Mel included that explained that this was a drying rack, but it shows that he's got a little bit of engineer in him and that what he did is he took an older style CD case and he drilled holes in that CD case and then there is a bit that rotates that is on pins that's like a lazy Susan and then in the center of that you have a reed soaking cup so it has everything that you would need in order to transport your reeds to and from location while still allowing them to dry out so that they will not mold or mildew so I thought this was very thoughtful and I loved all of the pieces that were included in this Okay guys, I think this is everything that I have purchased within the past few months for Bassoon. If you want reviews of anything in detail, be sure to leave me a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you don't wanna miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button. I will see you guys next time. Bye.